Hey guys, Dr. Daphne Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about Accutane, also known as Roaccutane, also known as Orotane. This drug has been in the dermatology world for the past four decades. It is widely prescribed for acne, as well as um, numerous skin conditions, which we'll discuss shortly. Now the drug itself is a form of vitamin A. Um, and the parent drug is called isotretinoin, which is the chemical name for Accutane. Now, what I'm trying to do is clear up a lot of myth uh, regarding this uh, drug because there's a lot of stuff out on social media, YouTube, and numerous blogs throughout the entire world in regards to this medication. So let's clear up a few things. I'll tell you the pros, the cons, the um, side effect profile, the safety, how dermatologists employ this drug, and what other substitute uh, things are there for your acne. So first of all, Historically, this drug has been used to treat bad acne. We're talking about severe cystic scarring acne, recalcitrant acne. But most recently, as in the last 10, 20 years, dermatologists have used this to treat, um, I guess, milder forms of acne, but still significant forms of acne. So things like hormonal acne, jawline acne, resistant acne, so resistant to certain antibiotics and normal, normal topicals. So dermatologists have used this drug for many, many years. Now, what are the indications? So we talk about acne. Off-label, it can also be an excellent modality for the treatment of oily skin, also known as seborrhea, which means um, oil on your, on your face or uh, in, in your scalp area. So how does this drug work? So it's a vitamin A drug, and what it does is it treats four important causes of acne. First of all, sebum, which is oil production. Secondly, inflammation. Thirdly, differentiation of um, your hair follicle or, or differentiation of the um, follicular unit. So what happens in acne is that um, your cells there differentiate abnormally and as a result you can get clogged oil glands, right? And the fourth way it works is it reduces C acnes, which is the bacteria implicated in um, acne lesions. So this particular drug works on four known modalities of, um, of acne. Now, how do dermatologists initiate this? Generally speaking, we start at a very low dose. Um, your dermatologist will be different, but most of them uh, may start you on something a very low dose, something like five milligrams. This is, when you look at the research over the past um, 40 years, you'll see that in the beginning, dermatologists used to give you a whacking dose. Um, I know, I used to work um, in the NHS, yeah, in England uh, 20 years ago. And in England, we were told that uh, we had four months to actually clear cystic acne because that's the NHS budget. We need to turn over the patients. As cruel as it seems, uh, we had to give, well, it's through instructions. We had to give one milligram per kilogram per day. Um, so if you're, let's say, 70 kilos, uh, we were starting dose of 70 milligrams, seven zero. And if you're pushing 80 kilos, it's 80 milligrams. So. Just to put things in perspective, nowadays, most dermatologists start patients on somewhere around uh, 10 milligrams per day. So it's a huge reduction in the dose. Um, in the past, we used to work on the total cumulative dose. So for example, if someone's 80 kilos, uh, what we want to do is give um, approximately 10 boxes. So that's uh, 20 milligram boxes. So each box contains um, uh, 60 tablets. So when we work out, the old formulation, we're looking at between uh, 1 to 1 1.5 um, milligrams total cumulative course of um, isotretinoin. So which means if you take two a day, which is 40 milligrams a day, you basically finish, so someone who's got a um, body mass of let's say 70 kilos, they finish the course in about nine months. But remember in the NHS, we were expected to finish the course, um, or the patients finish the course, in around four to five months at most. Yeah? The reason back then was that we needed uh, to get funding, we needed to actually increase patient turnover. Now, that's very different now. I, I think it's different now because now it's shown that um, a lower dose can still get you to the endpoint, but it's much less side effects. Yeah, So your side effect profile is less. And um, unlike the olden days or the older days where we're looking at total cumulative courses of or cumulative dose of isotretinoin, uh, most dermatologists work now by the two to three um, month rule. So in other words, treat all of acne till it's cleared, right? Plus another two months. Some of them work with three months. So 
that will give you a remission rate. So when, when we talk about remission, we talk about um, acne not coming back. And maybe your dermatologist does not talk to you about this, but the remission rate is somewhere between 60 to 70%. Uh, obviously, it's a lot higher if there are other uh, risk factors. For example, if there's a family history of acne, if you have uh, bad cystic acne or you have truncal acne, or if it's acne of early onset. So we're excluding all the secondary causes of acne. So all the endocrine causes, your you know, um, testosterone and, and your ovarian tumors, your uh, increase in DHEAS, 17-hydroxyprogesterone deficiency, prolactinemias, and, and a whole lot of others. So look, not to, com not to complicate things, uh, let's talk about the, I guess, the, the big elephant in the room is the side effect profile, yeah? And the side effect profile is really as long as your arm. So if we start from the top, you get everything from hair loss to, to CMS changes, which, which include mood swings. So you can get anxiety, you can get depression, you can get um, headaches, you can get blurred vision, you can get increased intracranial hypertension, uh, you can have loss of night vision, um, and then the musculoskeletal. So things like um, uh, sore joints, sore muscles, uh, lower back pain, um, problems with blood indices, for example, increased liver function tests, uh, increased cholesterol, increased triglycerides, uh, abnormal blood count, decrease in blood count, um, and skin-related changes. So things like um, a bleeding nose, you can also get colitis, which is dry lips, you can get cirrhosis, you can get uh, retinoid-induced eczema, uh, photosensitivity, <laughs> prone to cuts, bruises, poor wound healing. The list goes on and on and on. So we, as dermatologists, we don't deny that these side effects are uh, ever present. What we have to be is respectful of the medication. We have to select our patients very carefully. And in the, you know, there's a word, we call it a therapeutic alliance, which is basically the um, uh, patient and the dermatologist have an understanding that uh, in, in a conversation, an open conversation in regards to this medication, how it's used, the implications of the uh, medication, the duration of treatment, and most importantly, uh, the compliance of tests, but also for the patient's point of view to voice these side effects out to the treating dermatologist. So when you look, read in the forums, like, and look, I'll be a devil's advocate because I've, <laughs> I have been on this medications for my back acne, you know, a good 20 years ago, and I did have side effects. In fact, for me, it's not lethargy. In fact, I was hyperactive on it. Um, and had dry lips, dry mouth, and, and you know all the other cutaneous side effects associated with um, isotretinoin. But look, let's um, let, let, let's be the devil's advocate, and, and let's talk about I guess the side effects which you hear or see or read or I guess um, visualize on on YouTube and all the blogs out there. So there are I guess two schools of thought really. There's patients who are pro. Right and patients who are against, and then you have a whole heap of other people who don't know much, and hence that's why this video. So the pro isotretinoin, these are the patients who had really bad cystic acne where nothing else worked, yeah, and they were they're on this medication, they're on it for a short period of time. They have um, an understanding of the side effects and how to actually avoid and also treat those side effects, and they're the ones that have a good experience because um, nothing else has worked, and it's the only uh, medication that has cured um, the acne. Then you have the other proponents where, once again, it could be the patient, it could be the dermatologist, it could be both, yeah? Whether they have not got informed consent uh, in regards to the medication, or they've had a bad experience themselves, and maybe someone's not there to guide them, yeah? So there's two, there's really two camps in regards to that. So uh, I guess the way, if, you, if you're contemplating uh, seeing a dermatologist for this medication, what you've got to ask yourself is a few things. First of all, have you tried everything that's practically possible to decrease your acne? So in other words, when you see a dermatologist, most of us won't go, look, you know what, let, why don't we try some, you know, benzyl peroxide, we'll try some proactive, um, how about we try some adapalene? Most patients, when they see derms, um, they've had to wait a very long time, anywhere between, you know, a couple of weeks all the way to a couple of months or even years. And patients are frustrated. Dermatologists have time constraints. Uh, and what you want to do is make your time or make, make your visit the most efficient as practically possible to your derm. So in other words, 
I try certain things. That's why in this, um, I guess, channel plus my Instagram, um, it's Dr. Davin Lim um, Instagram or 101.skin, I go on and on about how to help my colleagues. Um, in other words, how to help patients actually streamline their visits to dermatologists. Because what you want is you want to do everything that's practically possible. So may I suggest this? You go on an acne diet, you, <clears throat> you watch what you eat, you have a low um, GI uh, food, you avoid lactose, you eat healthy, you decrease your refined foods, um, and you eat more natural, high protein, low lactose foods. See how you go, you may supplement that with things like zinc, uh, and then certainly consider treating yourself with things like benzoyl peroxide, um, 5% or even 2.5%. Uh, and then there's a lot of other things. In the States, you guys have adapalene or different, which is, it used to be our first line treatment. So now that when you see dermatologists, most patients would have tried that um, at home. So basically, that, there goes our first line treatment. So we need to step, step up that ladder. So that's the first thing to consider, yeah, is, is number one, uh, whether you've tried everything that's practically possible. Number two, whether you're well informed. So you have to make that decision whether you are well read in regards to the medication, especially when it comes to females because um, this drug is what's known as teratogenic. Teratogenic means if you don't get pregnant on this medication, the baby has a very high chance of being malformed and that's obviously a very, very serious uh, implication. So we're not talking about low birth weight or anything, we're talking about abnormalities of the brain, CNS, abnormalities of the heart, uh, and limb ab abnormalities as well, yeah? So this is a very serious uh, issue. So look, strict and absolute co um, contraception needs to be adhered to. Um, that's my word I always used to say when I used to prescribe this medically, strict and absolute contra contraception. Um, in fact, I think in the US uh, you need a negative um, pregnancy test. In Australia, what we normally do is have a pregnancy test for females with informed consent uh, between one to three months, yeah. Um, and the medication itself is teratogenic for, in the literature, it says up to um, a month. You need a month clearance. Most dermatologists would be happy with a month. Some of us would be happy for three months, a little bit extended, uh, even though the drug half-life is only a couple of days. So it's more on the side of um, absolute safety because it is a serious side effect, guys. Um, so you need to actually have informed consent in regards to that. Um, and then I guess from there, you need to actually dedicate yourself and go, look, can I comply with the blood test? Can I comply with the, um, with the instructions? Um, and can I comply with a, for example, a six month course or an eight month course on this medication? Most, it's from a dermatologist's point of view, our duty, our you know, duty as doctors, as um, physicians, is to ensure that each patient has absolute safety in regards to that. So in order for safety to be adhered to, remember that there are things that we can investigate. So things like your liver function test, your cholesterol, your blood count, but there are things we cannot, um, I guess, investigate. For example, your mood swings. So that's when the dermatologist has to actually have a therapeutic alliance with the patient and um, uh, ask things like, for example, have you got any mood swings? Have you had any anxiety? Have you had trouble sleeping? Have you got any, uh, any other problems, muscle aches, pains, etc.? Now, based upon um, the side effect profile, a good dermatologist would either, if it's a serious side effect, for example, um, you know, blurred vision, headaches, um, a dermatologist would cease the drug immediately. So this is out of your system in a couple of days, guys. So it's not like it's in your system for years and years. It's been shown to be out of your system within, literally within that one week, even though the, the warning says um, it, it's out of your system in a month. So conservatively, uh, it's a month. We all know it's out of your system within a week. Now, so that's the first thing. The second thing a dermatologist could do is actually decrease the dose. So for example, if you're taking for example, 20 milligrams a day, which is still, in the scheme of what, how we used to prescribe this, it's still a very, very low dose. But the dermatologist might go, look, instead of having 20 milligrams a day, why don't you stop this medication, wait for your side effects to actually decrease, and then slowly start um, taking your isotretinoin. So your Accutane, your, in your Accutane dose might be, just to give, give you an example, if you've got 10 milligram tablets, they might actually ask you to take 10 milligrams every second day and then build up slowly. So guys, it's not a freaking race. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a sprint. Um, this is actually a marathon. 
So if you have cystic acne or zits and you have, you know, basically it impairs your life to a point where it, you know, it, it affects your self-esteem, your social life, the whole lot, your mental health um, and your well-being, certainly this drug may be an option. I'm not saying it's the only option, it may be the option for you. So I guess you have um, uh, compliance from your side. Uh, the dermatologist has a duty of care. And hopefully those patients who may consider this medication will have a smooth journey so they can have actually a good experience with it compared to something which is um, so nasty that you know it's the worst thing they've ever taken. So guys, I see both sides, both sides of the story. Um, and, and like I said, you know, it's this advice is not pro isotretinoin, it's not pro Accutane. Because most normal derms, we don't actually go, oh cool, uh, let's see how many patients we can put on Accutane because it is worrying, worrisome for most of us uh, because of the duty of care and the responsibility that we take, um, especially with a drug so powerful. So anything which is powerful demands respect. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It is a, um, it is a controversial topic. Uh, and like I said, uh, if you can chime your thoughts below, your comments, if you've had the medication, um, look, whether it's good or bad, like I said, I'm not there promoting it. Whether it's good or bad, you might want to voice your uh, opinion down below. Uh, and like I said, any, um, I guess, constructive criticism where it's, it's uh, debatable in this, in this free society of speech, I think that creates a healthy environment for patients to chat and also um, advice to give, uh, especially for those who've been on it. So guys, by all means, comment down below. Um, look, I'll see you same time uh, next week. Uh, please subscribe uh, if you haven't considered subscribing. Uh, turn your bell notifications on and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.